I'm Peggy Webb, the director of West River Academy, and uh, today we're going to chat with Paula Lago, who is the director of Latin American Enrollment for West River Academy. And first, we'd like to speak with her about her journey into homeschooling. She lives in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and has two children and a husband. And so we're going to talk with her about her journey and how she came into um, be part of, you, of West River Academy and then um, what things look like in South America. So we hope you'll enjoy this interview and I'll welcome Paula now and ask her to talk a little bit about herself. Hi, Paula. Hi, thank you so much for this interview. <laughs> okay, um, we started homeschooling about eight years ago here in Buenos Aires. Um, I was a former school teacher, so I was quite disappointed with school <laughs> already. Right. And then I saw um, some families that was doing that were doing homeschooling here in Argentina. I already knew about homeschooling, but I thought it was illegal here, <laughs> that it was uh, forbidden. So I started researching, and I found a big group here already at that time. Uh, it was a Yahoo group, so I start uh, as everybody making questions and. So we decided to do it. I researched the legal aspect of uh, Argentina, and I found out that it wasn't forbidden. It's just it's not the rule. That's all. I mean, so many people do it, uh, but uh, there is no a, re a specific regulation to do it. Um, so we decided to have it a go, <laughs> and. The first year we were doing homeschooling by our own, but then I realized that some families uh, were enrolled in uh, foreign academies. And I talked to one of them that was uh, considering getting into West River. So I started Googling <laughs> about uh, umbrella schools and everything. And so when I found the approach of West River, I knew it has to be that. <laughs> Uh, I wanted something, I, I didn't want a virtual school, you know, again, uh, teachers and programs and uh, expectations for my kids and exams and everything like, like that. So when I found West River uh, and I, I feel totally uh, happy that I could do whatever I want with my kids, following their interests and having someone to back up <laughs> all that we were doing so we got involved one year after we start homeschooling how was it for you um or and your children t t talk a little bit about your children and their being in school and then transitioning out of school into unschooling eventually um how did that go for your family uh well now i can say it's perfect <laughs> But the first year was hard because I was so conditioned to what we do at school. Even as a teacher, I use a lot of uh, printables and, <laughs> and I was the one who chose what to do. And I realized that that was not working. Specifically with my, with my boy, he was uh, four years old when I took, I took him out of school. My girl was eight. Um, but she was, you know, used to school, so maybe uh, she put some faces sometimes <laughs> when you, when I give them, uh, I don't know, printables to do or things to do that they didn't like. And then was when I start researching about Sean Holt, that many families talk about unschooling, okay, what is it? <laughs> I start reading Sean Holt uh, about the uh, unschooling approach. And when I realized that the best thing was to work according to their interests, it was every, everything flowed, you know, uh, it was better. And uh, nowadays, my, I can see my daughter is now 16, going to 17. <laughs> and it's, in, it's unbelievable the things they can do when they have the interest or the, or the need to learn something. Uh, my boy too, I mean, I was so worried that he was not reading at six, not at seven, 
and suddenly one day I discovered he was chatting <laughs> with his uncle. <laughs> uh, so when when did you start <laughs> writing and, and reading? And he answered me, ah, oh, it was because the microphone got bro uh, got broken, so I need to write. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> so when when he found the the need, he just do it. I mean, it was amazing. Um, so it was hard at the beginning for me. I think it was hard for me, not for them. And um, now I can see that uh, everything is um, related to uh, confidence. You know, when you trust your children, that they they are really, really <laughs> able to learn whatever they want. Yeah, I think trust is such an important part of life in general, right? But when it comes to our children, we're so indoctrinated into thinking that it's our responsibility. If the children don't turn out right, it's our failure. And we then, because of that fear, we lose trust in ourselves as parents. And I, don't, I think the general um, society does not trust children. That's why we put them in institutions to make sure that things happen, that the society yeah. thinks should happen, right? But I think um, John Holt and others talk a lot about trust. In fact, I think that's one of the book titles, wasn't it? Something about trust your children or teach your children. <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah. But the whole book about teach your children was mostly about letting children learn. And you can only let them learn when you trust that they will. And a lot of people, I think you'll notice even now with um, kids staying home in various countries and people don't know what to do, and they think they just have to find something like school for their kids. And when we tell them about what we do, they, they're very skeptical, right? So you yeah. want to talk a little bit about, about that um, concept of trust that you're encountering with the people that you're working with? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, I always say that uh, first of all, you have to meet uh, all the, your kids' needs and what they really like to do. What are they uh, their skills? You know, because uh, if you don't know that first of all, <laughs> it's impossible to learn or to go uh, into a, a learning path that is um, good for them. Uh, there are kids that are quite structured, you know, they love to have their uh, notebooks and to take notes and everything. And there are kids that don't, they don't like that. They are more visual or they like doing things and they learn uh, in a different way. So that's why I, I really love unschooling because when you trust that everybody has their own way to learn, um, it's like a epiphany, you know, <laughs> you realize that, wow, this, this is really works. Uh, for example, my daughter is quite structured. She takes notes. She, she likes to highlight things. Um, but she follows their interests. I mean, she's not worried about, I don't know, learning algebra <laughs> or something like that because she's an artist, you know, she loves drawing. But for example, she learned uh, last year a lot of uh, anatomy because she wants to, to do good gestures and the body, when she painting bodies and she wants to, to learn. And so I think she, she knows more about anatomy than any kids at school, for example. Um, the same, uh, my, my boy, when he really wants to learn something, she, she, sorry, he's very interested in languages and it's amazing. And, uh, so when you when you think that you are doing things wrong, you know, oh, we did nothing this year. Oh, they only play or they only read or they only do this. Um, you are focused uh, uh, on the wrong on the wrong thing because uh, you you are putting your expectations before them. So I think we are used to do that. Okay, I need. What if someone uh, tried to test them? You know, especially uh, here in Latin America, that is not rule. We are afraid to be tested, <laughs> you know, because authorities can say, okay, if you are uh, teaching your kids, let, let's see if they are 
you know, at the same level of any other kids at school. So how do you explain that you are not following, <laughs> you know, the, the things that kids usually uh, see at school? So it's a lot of fears that um, you have to face little by little, but focusing, focusing uh, in what your kids are able to do. Because when you see what they are able to do, uh, for example, when I was a teacher, it was so awful to see kids not having interest in anything, you know? Oh, miss, uh, what does it mean, this word? Check it in the dictionary, you know? There is a dictionary. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's okay. And they don't even look for a word. <laughs> they are not curious at all. And when I um, see that my kids, uh, they can't uh, have a doubt about something that they go and they research and they look into uh, things that they are interested, uh, you see that they have the right skills to go and survive <laughs> in life and they can learn anything they want because that's the main point. You know, people are, are very worried about university, college, and honestly, we don't know if, if universities are going to exist anymore. <laughs> you know, with this pandemic, we've learned that, for example, everybody who was dubious about virtual learning, they are already doing that. <laughs> they were pushed to do that. So uh, you realize that um, we don't know about the future. Future um, can change from one day to the other. Um, so for me, it's more impor important that my kids learn skills to go ahead and, and, and to keep going and to resolve their own problems and not expecting that someone says, are you doing well? Oh, no, no, this is, a, this, this is not okay. You have to do it the other way. You know, they, that's important. I think we are living in a world already where we need people like that. <laughs> not people who remember uh, facts and dates and equations, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. You've covered a number of points there. Uh, what do you think were your biggest or still are your biggest challenges? Would it be people around you, your family that doesn't trust what you're doing? Do you get those kinds of challenges or is it mostly from the society or what are, what's the nature of the challenges that you see right now? Uh, well, I, it was really hard at first when you tell people that you are not going to school, that you do homeschooling because they don't understand and they don't think that works. Um, but thanks God, <laughs> since I, we were in uh, West River, you can say, oh no, they are, they are making a long distance program and that's changed, you know? Oh, kids are at, at home anyway. <laughs> But they they see differently because they are oh, there is an institution behind them. They are checking what they do, you know. But then when you explain, they go like, "What? So you are just basically doing nothing?" No, they they can't understand that. So I learned that you can tell, you can you can see who to explain to and who doesn't because not not everybody is. Uh, ready to understand. But what I've seen uh, in the last years, um, let's say two years from now, um, more and more people are more open to this kind of education. They already see that school is not working, that they don't, don't learn things, that they don't do good at university when they finish school. Um, so more and more people are being open to the idea of a different education. Yeah. Um, but my fear is, uh, is maybe um, if, you know, it, this is my fear, not my kids, but if I'm covering all their needs, you know, that if I, I'm investing the, the good amount of time with them, if I'm, I'm really seeing what they need, or what they want to do, uh, so, from time to time, I have to do my own autotherapy <laughs> about uh, my fears and to see where th that is coming from. Um, but uh, I, I'm totally over about people criticizing or everything like that. Yeah, you mentioned a good point there of trusting yourself as a parent. 
um, I often uh, emphasize that the freedom you see with West River Academy, freedom starts here. <laughs> um, we really promote freedom, but with that comes responsibilities, right? So when you're talking or you're thinking and you're doing your, your therapy on yourself, um, you're probably also um, thinking that you as a mother can do the best you can for your children, but ultimately it's not your and your husband's complete responsibility, right? That you transfer that to the children so that they take ownership of their education and they take responsibility for their decisions, right? So in the yeah. end, you know, um, the kids can go through homeschooling, unschooling, and go along with it. And then when they're in their 20s and things maybe don't go well for them, they turn around and say, it's your fault because I wasn't in school. I can't compete <laughs> to get these jobs. And so it's good to remind them along the way, right? That, um, you know, we're offering you this freedom and this type of an education, which we feel is superior. It will help you to keep your, your soul intact and your heart strong. And you're, <clears throat> you're pursuing what you're interested in. You're pursuing your passions. And remember that, you're taking responsibility for that. You're owning it. And if things don't work out, if every decision that you make is not perfect, then it's on you, right? There's, yeah. there's a balance there, right? And I think maybe as a mom, doesn't that help you when you start remembering that it's not all your responsibility? Yeah, sure. I think that's the problem, that we are used to um, a school that uh, make us... Um, thinking about uh, is our responsibility. If they are not learning or do their homework or whatever, it's the parents' fault. Uh, so you have to, it's a struggle when you start doing this journey that no, okay, I have a responsibility, but they have a big one too, because that, that's freedom after right. all. Um, if you are free to do something, you are responsible for, for what you do. You can't exactly. blame anybody. So yes, of course, they know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes, I, um, you know, it's, it's hard for oneself to, to realize that, no, wait, if I'm giving them the freedom, I'm giving them the responsibility. You know, I'm not yeah. um, stepping ahead and aside to, to the, my responsibility, but they have their own too. Exactly. Yes, it's important because when they grow up, uh, we live in a, in a world, and specifically in Argentina, everybody blames someone else. We, don't, we are not responsible for, any, for anybody, the government, the economy, the, and I don't want my kids to do like that. Like that. Exactly. So um, I, I think that's a very good point, yes. Yeah. Parents, we are used to blame ourselves, but it's, it's good. And if they have freedom, they have responsibility too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the things, as you know, that um, West River Academy basically doesn't have any specific requirements, right, according to academic studies or curriculum or materials or language. It's completely up to the parents to work with their children to decide what course of study they're going to have. Um, at the end of the year, it's not even a, a hard requirement, but it's a strong recommendation, especially for new people that are homeschooling or unschooling, is that they write us a summary of what the kids have learned. And um, it's called a year-end report, and it can be in any format, whether it's a video or it's a written thing. But I think what's really important, the reason that we created this exercise is so that parents who are just getting started can think about what their kids have learned during the year, and they can yeah. write it down or keep a record with videos or pictures. And at the end of that year, when they compile everything that their kids have learned, it's so impressive right? I had yeah. that experience. I did it when Karen was six and um, it would have been the end of first grade. And I was just, and, and it was in, back in the eighties and early nineties when it was not very common to homeschool, much less unschool. So I had a lot of fear and trepidation about, is she really learning enough? And um, so when I did that portfolio with everything she learned with all the books she read, all the places we visited, all the activities she's engaged in, all the languages and sports and things that she was part of, um, lessons that she took, 
it was just amazing. And I thought, there's no way that she could have done any of this in school because she would have only had after school hours to do all of that, you know, and she'd be in school that whole time. And that whole six hours would that or eight hours, would that have gained her as much as what we did during the year not being in school? So yeah. I did that once in my whole life as a mother. <laughs> that's all I <laughs> needed to do. So that's why we call it a recommendation, you know, because it's designed to be an exercise for you, the parent, to help you to gain confidence and to feel like, yes, I am doing the right thing for my my kids. Did you have that feeling when you did year-end reports or yes. didn't you do them? <laughs> yeah, no. The first time I, um, the first year I didn't do it because, you know, I, I wasn't in West River, but when I had to do it for West River, I had this idea that we have been in a chaotic year, that we have made no big progress. And when I sat down and started writing, I realized that it was the opposite. <laughs> They, they have made a lot of things. And yes, uh, one of the things that I, I thought was if they were at school, they couldn't have done not even the 10% of the things they, they have done this year. Yeah. Uh, because they, they were doing a lot of things, uh, languages and sports and um, I don't know, a lot of things. Uh, even together, when they uh, are four years <laughs> uh, in difference, uh, in age difference, they work together in, in some things, no, together. And that's so important because when you go to school, and, and this is something that maybe families don't realize till they get out of school. Uh, school even take you out time for being a family, you know, to, to know your kids or what they like, or what they are talking about, what questions do they have. Uh, especially if you work and then they go to school and then you just spend with them, I don't know, one or two hours uh, helping them in homes, uh, homework or having dinner and that's it. And we live in a rush when we go to school. And they don't have time for anything, not even to be uh, part of a family. So when you start having uh, uh, time for free, because that's the first thing you, you have, free time to do what you want, that's amazing because uh, you start sharing time with them, knowing uh, what they want to do, what are they, their interests, what kind of things they talk about. Um, so sometimes I realize why when uh, families take out uh, from school kids when they are in high school, it's so difficult for them. Because they are teenager, a difficult age, and parents are not used to be uh, close to their kids. They don't know them. So one of the first thing I, I said is know your kids, spend time together, uh, see what they want, what, what they really like. Don't, don't think about history, grammar, that kind of things. Uh, take a year just to know you um, as family, uh, stretch, uh, you know, your boundaries with them, with them. I mean, get close together, be a family, uh, because it's so important to know your kids. It's very important. Otherwise, you can help them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't that true, right? So before you found West River Academy, you had already decided to take your kids out of school, to homeschool. And what made you want to start your own group in Argentina? Educo en Casa is a, is a group that you now run to provide support for especially Argentinians, but, but all of Latin American families. And um, can you tell us a little bit about the group and um, what it offers? Uh, yes. Uh... I already uh, were thinking about sharing what we do at home, but it was difficult because it wasn't structure, a structure, you know, uh, I mean, it was just a blog, but a lot of families uh, keep asking, how do you do? How, how do you, what, how, what is your day like? And, you know, what do you do daily? Uh, how do I teach my kids and that kind of stuff? So, um, I realized that there was uh, so, I mean, uh, just a few blogs in Spanish that really uh, try to help uh, 
families to organize themselves and to have resources just in one place. I mean, you have a lot of resources, but you have to sit down and check a lot of uh, websites. Uh, so uh, I asked a friend of mine who is really creative, what if we plan to have a, a resource page, like a campus, but with a philosophy of the West River? I mean, nothing is uh, obligatory. I mean, it's just a, a help that you have to guide yourself how to do this. We can um, tell people how to work with projects so they can learn how to let kids uh, free in their learning. Uh, and they can consider to have a, a more holistic way of seeing uh, things, you know, because uh, mm -hmm. life is not divided in history, grammar, blah, blah, blah. So if a kid wants to travel somewhere, uh, they can see a lot of things, history, culture, languages, uh, I mean, even math, <laughs> if they calculate, you know, your budget and everything. Um, so we built a campus and we offer the West River accreditation, but it's totally free. I mean, uh, sometimes we have family that mm, get our program and they don't get into the campus at all. <laughs> and sometimes they just uh, follow everything like it was a school and then we have to teach them, <laughs> to teach the parents that they don't need to do that. I mean, uh, because of course they, they contact you and say, oh, my kid doesn't want to do this. And I'm, so let him, let him don't do it. <laughs> I mean, it's not, uh, it's not as um, obligatory, you know. Uh, you don't have to push them to do things. I try to see if they want to do something else. Uh, let's talk to them. Sometimes we talk to the parents and the kids if they are growing up. Um, so, uh, it was like, like me wanting to give parents a guide, that's all. Uh, but the, the main thing that we like to offer families is the support, you know? Mm -hmm. If they feel that they can do it or whatever uh, fear they have, they can count that there are other families and people before them that already went to that, <laughs> went through that. So uh, that's the important thing of the group. Uh, some some people get it, some not, <laughs> because many families think that they are getting into an online school. Uh, okay, so we, we have to explain them and what is it that I'm schooling about and let the kids be free to learn. And it's incredible the, the kind of things that kids can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you standards. charge for your, uh, How do you charge the families for the services you provide? Uh, well, they can pay the whole year, including West River, or they can do monthly payments. Um, we, till last, uh, sorry, uh, last year, till 2019, we included West River, and now we ask them to pay West River apart, <laughs> because here in Argentina it's quite difficult to send money abroad, so it's quite difficult to, to send a big amount of money. Um, so they, they split the payments, but most of them are uh, inside the group and, and get the, the program. We charge according to um, the level of the kids, because sometimes when they are in kindergarten or primary school, they, the guide we give them is quite detailed, so parents don't usually um, ask for help. They, from time to time ask for help. But in secondary, we almost work uh, with the kids and the parents and it's, uh, it's different. So uh, high school is a little bit more expensive than primary school or elementary or kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So we should maybe talk a little bit about how the group connects with West River. People are probably wondering <clears throat> um, how, how that works. So, um, I guess this was back before Educo and Casa became a group that we established this, where we were uh, contacted by people in other countries and they said, you know, we have a group of kids and we're outside the school system and we're kind of afraid of being outside the school system because the government is rather harsh and we're not really doing things that are extremely legal, you know, according to the officials but we feel we have the right to do it. And if we could get a little more backing that would provide some more legitimacy 
to what we're doing, then maybe the government will be more lenient with us and our, our, our groups, our group members won't get in trouble. So they asked West River if we could enroll the students from their groups. And we said, well, yeah. So we created a structure where the, there's an, an administrator for each group. So for example, Paula is an administrator for the Educo and Casa group. And students will find her or they'll find us and we'll refer to her or she'll um, enroll them in her group. And then um, because we're affiliated, then her group members will receive a discount on their enrollment in West River. So our enrollment for a student of an independent Lee enrolled family is $375. And when Paula enrolls the students from her group, then they'll pay $225 for the school year. Um, if there is a sibling in a family, then we charge $50. And for the groups, we charge $40. And if the groups are bigger, like a group of over 100, we offer a 20% discount. And you know, so it's tiered. So um, that way, at the beginning of every year, the uh, groups enroll and they receive official in, um, confirmation of enrollment letters. And then at the end of the year, they can order transcripts. So the administrator would send us the information to put on the transcripts. We create them and then um, sign them and send them back to the families or back to the groups who distribute them to the families. Um, and if the legalization is asked for, then we can have them notarized. We can have them sent to the Secretary of State of Colorado for an apostille, which is uh, another form of legalization. And then the families can present those documents if necessary to the Ministry of Education in their country um, who validates them and then allows the student to enter into a public university. Um, that's the purpose of the legalization. And not all countries, uh, ministries of education will do it. Um, some do, some don't. So maybe Paula, if we can talk a little bit now more about the groups in Latin America, because you're working with them directly with the administrators and so maybe you can give us a sort of a broad picture of what, what does homeschooling and unschooling look like in Latin America, the growth of it, the groups and how they work and what are some phenomena that you have, have noticed with the differences between homeschooling there and in the US? Uh, what I can see is growing a lot. I mean, there is more and more groups that are, that are, or people that are, that are contacting uh, West River to know about how they can offer accreditation to their students. And I see that many of them are from uh, projects that they can't get the accreditation of the ministry of each country because they are alternative schools. And it's very hard here in Latin America that uh, alternative school is, um, is uh, accepted by the ministry of education. No, no, it's, it's super hard. They ask a lot of things and they don't usually like alternative schools. Uh, so they apply to West River so they can have their own project running with accreditation. Uh, so we have uh, groups that have even a physical building where kids go, like in a school, but they, they work different like in any formal school. And we have many others that have uh, virtual programs like maybe Educon Casa, and they offer accreditation too. And now we are starting to receive um, uh, people who is helping kids in, in school, you know, the, like uh, tutors that help kids to do well at school, and they realize that school is not for their students. So they want to, to offer accreditation uh, to them. Uh, so that's it's a, quite a variation of different kind of groups but many of them uh, come to west river because they realize that school is not working for kids uh, so they, they want to offer something different and we don't have many um many groups that maybe uh, our families who gather together and they want to have a discount let's say uh, but more and more people that it's offering different services and they would like to have accreditation um, for now <laughs> there is no problem in any country in latin america uh, 
with this, but um, most of the country have no regulations. So I don't know in the future if may a problem arise with authority, but I don't think so. If we don't have any problems now, I don't think in the future we are going to have one. Uh, in fact, what I can see here in Argentina is, for example, in the Department of Validation, they already know how it works. They, at first, they didn't like it, but they are still validating uh, our documents, so I don't think they have uh, problems in the future. And we are in, with, a, with a new government, and then don't even put any problems or make any problems either. So I, I don't think that in the future, on the contrary, the, the new Minister of Education here in Argentina, he is, uh, uh, he is um, quite known because of distant education for colleges. So I think he is totally okay with, with trying to apply that to uh, high school or maybe elementary school even. So, um, but groups works mainly with a big number of families. Sometimes they start small, but they grow a lot. Um, and I, I, they offer different kind of things. Uh, so that's good because the, the people can have uh, many things where to choose. That's great. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Some of the groups are, um, are like virtual schools, so they provide an online platform. That would be the most structured type of groups that we have. To the other extreme is more like Paula's group of Educon Casa, which is join, we can assist you, take what we have, um, we don't require anything. So seeing that's, a, that's more liberal. And just to give people an idea of the countries, I'd say Argentina, of course, you've talked a lot about um, other countries that are very um, easy to work with, um, have growing numbers of homeschoolers. I think um, now Ecuador is, is growing quite a bit because of this um, situation where they, they've closed schools and there's no alternative. There's no online stuff there. So we've had a lot of, um, of inquiries from Ecuador, but they don't seem to understand that when they enroll, they don't just get a curriculum. <laughs> so some people are ready for what we offer in terms of complete freedom to work. Um, others are saying like, well, if we don't offer curriculum, our kids will just stay home and watch television and we have to make them do something. And so, of course, Paola and I are busy talking to people to help them understand how they can work with their families and not have them just be babysat by television. But some people are very adamant and they want the structure and then they're not right for us. But others are willing to learn more about how to work with their families in a freer way. And so um, we are seeing growth that this uh, pandemic has, has really pushed people um, to take a look and see if something else might be good for them. So that's a very big thing, in, especially in Ecuador recently. And um, other countries that we've been working with are, you can help me, Paula, but Colombia, Mexico, of course. Yeah. Um, we Panama. have in Panama, El Salvador. Yeah. Um, we have a group in Costa Rica, well, a number of groups in Costa Rica that government is not friendly, so they do not validate our documents. But, um, and we don't have, if we don't have experience trying, then we can't tell you yes or no. So some of the newer countries, you know, we don't have experience with like El Salvador. Um, I don't think Panama we do yet either, do yeah. we? No. Now we have kids that have come back to school uh, and they were accepted. So I think there is not going to be any problem when they graduate. Oh, okay. So you mean by the Ministry of Education, yeah. um, they validated for going back to school? Yeah. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. All right. Did I miss any countries uh, that we're working with in Latin America? No, there are mainly those countries. That Bolivia, we've about. heard from recently. Yes, um, uh, they're from Bolivia, Venezuela. some from Peru, uh, Peru a few right. from Venezuela. Venezuela is... Uh, Usually, people who is living outside of Venezuela. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, it's I mean, thing. they are Venezuelan, but they are not living in Venezuela because it's quite hard to do homeschooling there. Even if the legal aspect is the same, like in the rest of Latin America, uh, and there are some people from Guatemala that called mm -hmm. me to to know about what's we were too. Yeah, and I think Brazil, even though it's a uh... It's yeah, <laughs> speaking, we're getting um, requests from Brazil. We don't have groups there yet. So it's very interesting. We can't tell really how it's growing. 
Um, but just from the people who contact us, we have a sense of how it's spreading to other countries. And all of a sudden, you know, there'll be one or two people and then more and more and more. And like, particularly right now in Portugal, it's not in South America, but we started with a couple people and now it's almost every day I'm getting something from Portugal. So it is growing. It's, um, it's just people are getting it and they're finding us. And uh, I'm sure they're finding a lot of other institutions or, you know, groups. And so we're not right for everybody. Um, but we do notice the, the surge, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and nowadays uh, you see that in, in countries that uh, West River was quite a long time, uh, that they are now mouth to mouth, you know, <laughs> they are, oh, my kid is in this school. Oh, really? It's not just because of a blog or someone who heard in a group or Facebook or something like that. They, people are talking to each other and they recommend West River. So I, yeah. we can see that a lot in Argentina and Ecuador and Chile. Uh, so it is growing a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, um, I think that's all I had to ask you about <laughs> for questions. Uh, so if anybody uh, wants to follow up um, and ask Paula anything about South America, she knows everything. <laughs> so <laughs> um, you can send her an email uh, to apoyo, which is the Spanish word for support, apoyo, A-P-O-Y-O, at westriveracademy.com. Uh, you can always go to our website, westriveracademy.com, and on the homepage, you can drop us a message, or if you go to our international page, then uh, you can find your flag and click on it and send us a message, and we'll know where you're from. And if you write in Spanish, then Paolo will answer you in Spanish. Even if you write in English and you're from um, a Latin American country, she'll still answer you in Spanish. So that's kind of how, how we operate. And... Um, We'd be very happy to have you contact us with any questions that you have. So, um, and Paula has her group available to anybody, not just people in, um, in Argentina, but anybody who would like to take advantage of the resources. And if you, um, if you ask us, we'll let you know the groups that are available in other countries. There are many in Ecuador, in Mexico, um, Colombia, um, more than just one and they do different things and so we'll give you the links and the names of those groups and you can check them out and, and especially if you're new it's always um, helpful sometimes for people that are new to have someone to hold their hand to get started or a support they're like a support group and they can give you resources and and help and get you to know other people and so forth so um, we'll definitely provide you with the names of the groups and the people you can contact in your country. And there are representatives uh, besides the groups. For example, in Peru, we have a couple of ladies that are our representatives, even though there's no official group there. But we like to have you contact those people because they know their country and they can tell you the sense of what's happening and what you can do, what you shouldn't do, how you can do it. And they're just invaluable to have local people in every country that uh, we can give you the names of so that you can find out what's good for you. So, uh, Paula, do you have anything further that you would like to add to our discussion? Did I miss asking you about anything? Uh, no, I just tell the people that uh, contact us if they have any doubts and they can ask for a free consultation so that we can talk. So mm -hmm. uh, that's important not to get informed, all the information, so right. to decide. Would you like to uh, screen share your website so people can see what it looks like? Oh, uh, sure. Uh, I'll try. It yeah, is. there it is. So you can see educoencasa.com is the URL. Yes. And, and the then a uh, website with testimonials and the whole philosophy of unschooling in, written in Spanish. Yes, and, and this is the campus, and we have all campus. the resources mm -hmm. for people. It has a forum and a group uh, where kids can chat to <laughs> and contact us. Okay, very good. And our website, West River Academy, is 
westriveracademy.com and um, you'll see it looks at like just what's behind me here. We are accredited, we are international, we serve K through 12, we are a private school, we have two offices, there are three offices in the United States, and we have four, two in San Diego, one in Dana Point, California, and one in Denver, Colorado. So um, we operate in both of those states, of course, but we, oper but we enroll students, oh, there you are, thank you. <laughs> but we enroll students from all over the world, as you know, and, uh, if you'd like to enroll, you click on that Enroll Now button and create an, your own account. And then you'll be able to enroll your children, download your confirmation of enrollment letter, and order any other services such as consultations. You can enroll in our graduate graduation project, which is a story of your students' experience. Your student writes the story of their educational experience, and it's our only requirement for graduation. And then we create the transcript for you. We order the diploma and send the transcript off to colleges. So generally homeschoolers who apply as West River Academy students will not be put into a homeschoolers category. So you don't have to go through all of the proving everything you did. You'll be seen as a graduate of a private school in the United States. And that, that goes for students in, um, all over the world too. If you come to the U.S., <clears throat> to go to college, then um, it's a lot easier to come through us and then have us send the transcript to the universities and colleges here. So, and if you present to the Ministry of Education and get validation, then you can attend the universities um, in those countries as well. So that's, that's what we're all about. We're just so grateful that Paula has come to be part of West River Academy, not only conducting her own group, Educo en Casa, but also becoming the director of the Latin American enrollment uh, for West River Academy. And, and so um, we do have a native Spanish speaking person <laughs> um, on our staff that is very willing to help. So uh, thank you so much for, uh, for being willing to be interviewed by me, your boss, <laughs> but not really. We are, we have a great team. My two, Younger daughters are members of the team now. My oldest daughter has two children and she's gone off to be a full-time mom. But um, so my three daughters started out being in, be working with West River and now the two younger ones are. And so our staff is gradually growing and we do our best to take care of everybody and, and provide you with real personal service. So welcome and uh, thank you so much for watching this video and getting familiar with what's happening in the world of homeschooling beyond the border of the United States. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Thank you. Paula. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.